Hello, it's John Miles here, and I'm going to show how to set up and use an iris camera. And this particular model is the single central lighting camera, and I will review what is included here. First, you have the camera kit itself, and there's also in a, another envelope some documentation. The yellow envelope that's outside the case has things you don't really need to use very often, but it's the D3200 user manual, some other documentation, and then an in-depth guide about how to use the iris camera. So that's good for reference, but once you learn it, you don't really need to carry all that around. And now inside the case, I'm going to pop it open by pushing these two buttons and pulling the lever forward. This opens it up like so, and first thing I want to point out is behind the foams in the lid, there is some additional documentation, including this quick setup guide that shows pretty much uh, the few steps involved in using the camera. And there's also a folder in here that has... Um, Here's uh, an instructional DVD on um, using the camera for general photography. Here's a resource CD that I made that has lots of references and articles and even video, instructional videos and software is on this disc. And this is Nikon uh, picture organizing software, which I don't use. And then there is this sample photo taken with this camera and um, some of these transparent overlays which you use by positioning it right over the center of the pupil there and then you can identify what sector each sign is in. So that is all in the documentation behind the top lid foam and you'll find all of that there. Next, I will explore the kit itself, and of course, uh, it's a pretty simple setup. Now, the and next strap, you really don't need that or want to use that with iris photography, so I would uh, discard that and store it somewhere for possible future use if you travel with this as a general photography camera. It might be handy, but generally, you don't really want the strap in there. And, of course, this is the camera, the DSLR 24-megapixel D3200 with a Nikon 85mm macro lens. And that is the heart of the iris camera. And this is the illuminator, and that is what controls the lighting. And it has an adjustable brightness focusing light that you turn on here and battery pack there. Also, there's a card reader here, and it will uh, go along with a, a little um, USB cord. For This is one other way of getting data images into your computer from the camera. Alternatively, you can use this USB cord, and that will download the photos directly. The one that has the yellow and the white that is an audio-video cord for playing back your movies on a, on a video, on a monitor. You can explore that further. And otherwise, uh, well, we have a pack of spare batteries for the focusing light battery pack and a Phillips screwdriver to open it and uh, replace the batteries. Um, this, you don't generally need to use this, but it's called the eyepiece cover, and it goes right there. You have to actually lift this off, so you take that off, and then you can slide that on, and it blocks any light from getting in there. But you don't generally need that with the photography we're doing, so but it's included for completeness. And additionally, here's a spare camera battery um, that's all charged up and ready to go. You should always have one ready in case your battery runs out. The battery will run out faster when you use the playback function or a lot of uh, other photography and autofocus. Here is a general purpose lens. You can take regular pictures uh, inside or outside with that. That's also included. 
So I'm putting all these cords back. And none of this is really necessary here. So what I want to show next is the camera itself, which is this and the illuminator. And the way that works is the first step here is to mount the illuminator to put these two together. And the steps for that are you first take the lens cap off. And then you take a look at the lens and you want to dial in the closest focus, 0 0.286 and 1 foot, 286 millimeters, which is 1 foot. And then um, the lens should, for normal iris photography, always be on M for manual. That's the rear position. VR should be off because you never need to use vibration reduction when you're using the electronic flash. And, of course, um, uh, once you turn it on, which is the next step, then you pop the flash by pressing the button that has a lightning bolt icon. And you'll also want to check and make sure this is on A and the MASP. That's uh, Manual Aperture Priority, Shutter Priority, and Program. But you want it on A for all iris photography. And with that, then, this is the whole camera set up. And we can proceed to, uh, I see the battery here. In this case, it's a bit low. So I'm going to uh, replace the battery. And this is uh, an extra battery here. I'll bring out, well, I'll just use this one for now. And it goes in like that. So the way you replace the battery is the terminal end goes up, the words go out, and that goes in and it'll click and then you snap that door shut. Then when you turn it on, it'll show the full three green segments of the battery and lit up. So that's a brand new freshly charged battery. And again, once you turn it on, you check the focus, put it down to the minimum, which is 286. And to do that, you just remember, take your left hand and always push downward. Now the barrel keeps turning, but it still stops at 286. And I say your left hand isn't the natural one to use because you will normally hold the camera with your right hand in the grip here. And the next step after powering it on, checking the A and the focus as you push the little lightning bolt icon button to pop that flash. And now we take the illuminator and this type of hood mount illuminator attaches with a bayonet type of action where you push it on here at the 9 o'clock position and then you rotate it into the 12 o'clock position. So we're going to do that. Get that here and that should be right in front of the hand grip there. And then you rotate this up like so and it clicks right into place in the 12 o'clock position. Now uh, the brightness of the focusing light is dialed in here. And once you have done that, you're ready to take eye pictures. Now I'm going to show this a couple of different ways, but uh, I don't have anybody here. So I'm going to take my own eye picture just to show how easy it is. And when you're doing uh, selfies, iris selfies, you have to put it on autofocus. And actually, uh, autofocus works pretty well for blue irises, but it doesn't work that well for brown iris. So then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take this picture like so. I just get in place here. I have the focusing light it's all lined up. And once the autofocus finds it, then you can see it takes a perfectly good photo. You can zoom in to check for the sharpness and the focusing accuracy. But basically, that's a perfectly good iris photo. And then um, you would normally take the other iris, the left eye, and again, you just point it here. I'm just going to take a nice quick photo of my left eye. 
Now the thing about autofocus, it does have to hunt. And sometimes you'll find that the lids are in the way. And you might want to take it over again. So uh, you can just check it and see if you can see the whole iris. In this case, I think I will take it over again. So here goes. And I'm doing lid retraction. Generally, it's good to have the client tug on their lower lid and look straight in there. See, now that's a lot better. And you can see the whole iris and um, everything is sharp and focused, good exposure. It's on auto exposure. And that's basically all there is to it. I just took a couple of photos. I have my eye picture. And then when you want to play it back, you hit this uh, playback button, which is right here. And then you do the either the left arrow to, to scroll back. It'll say picture 18 of 20 in the corner. Then I go to the left and it's 17 of 20. Some of these are not as good. That's 16 of 20. Or you can scroll by clicking this thumb wheel uh, upward. Increases like from there to 17 to 18 out of 20. And uh, there's the one I just took. So that's how you play it back and check your pictures. And then um, when you're done taking the pictures, generally you'll turn it off. And you can eject the card just by pushing in on it like that. And then it, it has, uh, sticks out enough for you to pull it out. This is a 16 gigabyte SDHC, high capacity. And um, to put it back in, put this slanted corner at the top first. And then you push it in like that, and close the door. And when you turn it on, you can play back the pictures by hitting that playback button. And it showed the most recent photo, which, you know, is a perfect iris photo. And then you can scroll back by either hitting the left and right arrow to go reverse or forward. Now it's on 18 of 20. But if I roll the thumb wheel to the left, it'll go to the 17. And that's how you use the camera now. The next thing I want to show is how to use a chin rest if you have one. So that makes it a little bit easier. I'll set this aside over here. And I do have a chin rest. And this is the standard $500 portable chin rest. It breaks down nicely. I've got another video that shows how you um, set it up. And then, of course, to use it, you just adjust the chin cuff. That's pretty much the only adjustment. And then after you mount the camera, you just do your other adjustment is to position it and focus. Uh, it comes with some patented applicators, which can be used to open a person's eyelid if necessary, especially if you have an assistant. And then the uh, chin rest, you'll have a few cords. Here's a USB extension cord. Um, and all that does is allow the camera to be a little further from the computer. That's only for the computer. And then there's this other one which allows you to power the focusing light with a USB power source. So, for example, if the batteries are dead, you use this type N barrel DC connector, plug it in there, and then plug this into any USB um, socket and it'll get its power for the focusing light that way. And the third cord is the interesting one here is for uh, HDMI. So it turns out you can plug your camera right into a monitor using this mini HDMI connector, which is like a miniature HDMI connector. And then you plug the regular HDMI connector, the normal size one, into your monitor. But the smaller one that fits into the side, there's a jack right here that it fits in. So I'll explore that in the next video. But I just wanted to show how easy it is to use the camera, especially with the chin rest. And to do so, um, I'm just once again going to take photos of my eye. So I'll mount the camera here, and to do so, uh, the quick release plate snaps in to this quick release. And then you always have to squeeze it like that to tighten it. And then once that's all set up, then 
Uh, it looks like I am ready to go ahead. It's just necessary to turn this on. I have it on F25, which I can adjust by simply rotating the dial, but I recommend 22 or 25. And then I'm going to, um, the way this works is you point the camera at the client's eye, right at the center of the eye. In fact, I will hold it like this so you can see. And then you just move this, get it just right here, get it centered, and turn on the focusing light so that the um, camera is able to find a good focus. And then I'll just hit it. Just double check here. Now there is a trick to getting autofocus to work, and that is you have to be a little bit away from the minimum focus. You have to be slightly uh, farther than the minimum. And once it finds the focus, it will take it, and then you can see the picture there. It is uh, right there on the camera. And so the best way to do this is usually uh, you have the practitioner across the corner of a table from the client, and the client is here, and then after you get the right iris, I recommend always doing the right iris first. You just point this over here at the left iris, Tilt it up right just like that, and then you have the person cover the eye that's not being photographed. And there, I just took a, a, the second picture, which is of my left iris, and it's a perfectly good, sharp, well focused iris photo. And that's really all there is to it. Once again, um, it's nice with the center lighting because it's so simple. There's no adjustments. You can take your uh, own eye picture. For the blue iris, the autofocus works quite nicely. And I would just uh, take it like this. There. See? And now the other eye. Let's look at it. And there's my left eye. I, I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. And then. As I say, there's a number of ways to transfer the uh, pictures to your computer or to show them, and that is what I will explain next.